I'm so happy we had the bye week because the Ravens, they haven't completely found their groove yet, but it seems like they really started to really find who they are and figure out their identity, so to speak. And I know when we say that word identity, it's like, ooh, we didn't heard that one before. We're forging a new one and da da da. But it seems like these Ravens are really figuring some things out, even though they still got some stuff to work on. They still got some stuff to fine tune, but six and three going into the bye week, hey, that's okay with me. But to talk about that identity, first question on this episode came from my guy, Darrell. He said, what's up, big dog? Hope you're having a good day. Hey, we having a great day. Uh, he said, let me just say, I was wrong during the preseason about Kyle Hamilton. I'm definitely loving what I'm seeing from him. Uh, yes, uh, Kyle Hamilton has been better. He's been the game is slowing down for him and it has slowed down for him pretty fast because there was some times early on where he would look a bit lost but now it seems as if he's been being put in better positions to succeed and that's all we could ask for uh he said uh but adding roquan smith makes this defense just nasty in a good way and i can't wait to see it with mr 70 million dollar man marcus williams but hey Justin Houston, he got to chill out, man. He trying to get that Von Miller paycheck. Dude is balling. I'm loving it. And, yes, um, Roquan Smith, he made an immediate impact, like literally right away, right away. Um, and like you mentioned, uh, yeah, they're going to get Marcus Williams back, so he will make this defense that much better, that much better. Uh, and then, yeah, with Justin Houston, it just it don't even make no sense. It don't make no sense just how – Levels above all of our other pass rushes, Justin Houston has been this year. Um, defenses, I mean, offenses haven't had an answer for him. They haven't. And I hope they don't find an answer for him because a good pass rush would just make life, it makes life that much easier for everybody. See, when, when you have complementary football, especially complementary football on, on one side of the ball, like the pass rush, it helps out the linebackers. Good linebacker play, it helps out the secondary. Good secondary play, it, it go, it's, it's a big circle of life. Because good secondary play, it helps out the pass rush. And then it just, it, it's just a, a, a revolve, not a revolving door, but it's just a circle of life, like we said earlier. Circle of life, should have stuck with that one first. But everybody helps everybody. Football is the ultimate team sport, man. But one, if everybody's doing good, then it's a beautiful thing. If one area is lacking... Sometimes the other two areas can cover it up, but it just makes stuff that much harder. So it's been a nice thing to see the defense just getting better and better. Uh, he said the run game now, on, talking about the offense now, the run game is back to normal. Uh, because I don't know. <laughs> he said because I don't know what it was early on in the season. See, with the run game early on, we got to think. Context is big because we could just be like, man, what was going on with the Ravens run game early on this year versus what's happening now with it. Earlier this year, no J.K. Dobbins, no Gus Edwards, no Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie Stanley has been big in the run game. Uh, he's been huge, but Gus Edwards too. And Ken Drake. Ken Drake wasn't as comfortable as he is right now. So I think it's just it's, it's been one of those things where so many different factors and they all contributed to how poorly the run game was earlier this season. But now it's really like, They've been finding this rhythm, so it's been looking a whole lot better, like you mentioned. Uh, he said, and shout out to Mike McDonald as well. He's been calling good games and making adjustments we haven't seen in some years. And he put the, uh, and the sleep emoji. So he's taking, he taking a little shot at Wayne. He's taking a little shot, but it's, it's all good. He said, uh, but I'm out, and all the team keep it clean. Y'all have a great day, and always God first. You already know what time it is, man. Now, um, yeah, the... You mentioned a lot of the things that the Ravens, they got going good right now, which is good. And, and there's still things, again, even with them finding their identity, they still got room for improvement. Um, missed opportunities. Uh, I know with, with the past game, Lamar, he, he's missed some opportunities. Missed some sort of some layup throws. Um, he's also made a lot of crazy plays as usual. So even with the missed opportunities, Lamar has still done some amazing work. Uh, he's had some misses. Ravens have had some drops. Uh, they've had some some silly penalties. Um, but again, it's all the stuff that they got to get cleaned up. It's all stuff that's doable. It's stuff that can be fixed. Now, 
with with you and with us talking about the Ravens really finding their identity. One thing that is going to be very interesting is when Mark Andrews gets back. It's going to be very interesting to see how this passing game is when Mark Andrews returns. Because since Mark Andrews has been out, um, most of the Bucks game and all of the game against the Saints, that ball has been going to a lot of different people. Um, but now with Mark Andrews coming back for the Panthers game, he should be back by then. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how it is. But it's like for the, the problems that the Ravens have, um, again, it's, it's a beautiful thing that they're all fixable issues. It's not stuff where it's like, oh, man, I don't know if they're ever going to be able to get that right. But it's stuff that they just some fine tuning here and there. Uh, and they should be good to go. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of questions from y'all And uh, to get us, uh, or to continue, I was about to say to get us started, but to continue uh, Next question came from another patron, uh, my guy Dominic He said, what's up Engraving? Great game last night from these guys all around Mike McDonald's best game of the season in my eyes Sticking with the defense, with guys coming back after the bye week on the defensive line How important is it in your mind to be able to get pressure with just four? I think this changes a lot for a team who was blitz heavy last season and it hit us a couple of times, but now it looks like we don't have to blitz as much and it makes a big difference. What are your thoughts? That's a good point. Um, Cause if you can just rush four and get pressure and actually get sacks, get production. Oh, that just makes life easier for your whole team, your offense and defense. Um, because it, you, that allows you to do more uh, with more. Instead of having to do more with less. Like, uh, it allows you to do more as far as pass coverage. Because if you could just rush four, then that means you got seven in coverage. You got seven people drop back to cover four, five pass catches. So that that helps you out a lot. It makes your life easier. Um, and that's, 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 that's what I'm about, man. That's all I'm about. Trying to make life easier for everybody on offense, on defense and whatnot. Just trying to get people to help each other out so things can run uh, that much more smooth. Next question came from another patron, my guy Gary. He said, Hey, Graven, hope you're having a great vacation. Well, he sent this when we were still on vacation. But he said, hope you were having a great vacation. You deserve it. You work your tail off just for team. Keep it clean. Uh, and I mean that. It's all good, man. I, I appreciate it. We, we did have a really good time. Um, so I thank you. Uh, he said, my question is, is it time to worry about Rashad Bateman's health moving forward? I feel really bad for him, but we should have traded for a wide receiver if we knew he was going to be out. I don't understand the front office. I would love to know what you think. Shout out from Ireland. I didn't know you was in Ireland. I thought you were somewhere else, but I, I appreciate you, man. Um, I think they, they, they definitely do need to worry about Rashad Bateman's health. Uh, moving forward, and I, I think just the way that the Ravens treat uh, Rashad Bateman um, moving forward, it has to unfortunately change, and it has to be one of those things where you obviously hope that he'll be there, but the expectation has to be like, it almost, you almost have to expect that he's going to miss some time. You hope that he doesn't, of course. We obviously hope that he can stay healthy, but moving forward, you just... The expectations as far as health, they have to be lowered and you have to treat not not necessarily treat Rashad Bateman like he's a bonus, but you have to stay ready. So you ain't got to get ready. Um, so that means you need to 
bring in more supply uh, of wide receivers. Next question came from another patron, my guy Jason. He said, Engraving, I hope everything is good. Looks like you were on a cruise. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, we certainly did. I appreciate it. Two things. Number one, I tried to walk myself on your view about Patrick Queen after the Roquan Smith signing, and I have to disagree. If we remain a 3-4 defense, there will be a place for Patrick Queen. At the very least, pick up his option next to see what this linebacker core can fully look like. The clock is taking on Josh Bynes and Calais Campbell. Steve Ross isn't promised to be back and fully healthy. Oh, you mean uh, Josh Ross. Uh, Tyus Bowser has to get back up to speed. David Ajabo, once he's up to speed, he in a way will hopefully take us back to the place we were with Judon and Zadarius Smith. I say all that to say Queen and Smith can coexist in the future. My thing with Queen, again, back to that, I, I would love if they kept him, if they could find a way to keep both, but it's just not, not how things happen um in order for them to keep both because obviously Roquan ain't going nowhere Patrick Queen would have to take a cheap 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 deal uh and while he hasn't consistently always lived up to the expectations of a first round pick at inside linebacker um he him taking a cheap deal from the Ravens would be probably be bad business for him um a lot of times we've seen with Eric DaCosta um, if he is not going to pay you, if he's not going to, doesn't plan on signing you to a long-term deal, then he'll trade you before your contract runs out. And it could be somebody that I, they, that they probably should have kept, somebody that it would be nice if they would have kept, like a Hayden Hurst, that would have been great, like an Orlando Brown Jr., that would have been great, like a Hollywood Brown, that would have been great, but he wasn't going to pay those guys, especially when he paid their counterparts at the same position already. Um, or he had another plan in place at the same position already. Like, again, uh, they paid Ronnie Stanley. They weren't going to pay Orlando Brown Jr. They uh, Mark Andrews was ascending. They ended up paying him. They weren't going to pay Hayden Hurst. And Hayden Hurst, well, he wanted his opportunity. They're going to pay Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen. They're, they're not going to pay him the big money, too. So I, I, I love... I love the way that they've looked together in that first game. It was beautiful, wonderful. It was, it was amazing. I loved it. Um, I just I don't see it being a long term thing though, just because of the contracts, man. That's it. Uh, just just the business side. As far as the football side, yes, it makes all the sense in the world to keep them together. And what it makes all the sense in the world, but it's just the business side that tends to get in the way a lot. Uh, and then he said, and lastly, Greg Roman does realize he no longer has any excuses to hide. Now that we witness him call such a good half of football, of offensive football against Tampa Bay, um, void of Andrews and Bateman. Uh, so if you can do it once, you can do it again, especially against our remaining schedule. Thanks for the time and appreciate your work. Oh, I appreciate it, Jason. And yeah, we, we saw uh, in the game last night, well, last night from when I'm recording this, um, but on Monday night, he he called a pretty good game. Situational play calling was good. Overall, the play calling was pretty good. Uh, there was some execution mishaps that happened, but play calling overall from Greg Roman in that game against the Saints was on point. Next question came from Patricio, and, and appreciate you being a patron. Say, hey, hello, Engraven. I hope that you you were doing great. Hey, we're doing really good. I appreciate it. Uh, as everyone knows, the trade deadline... I was here and the Ravens didn't try to trade for a game-changing wide receiver. Of course, I'm really happy for the Roquan Smith trade, but how are we going to be able to execute without someone who is him? Of course, Bateman is nice. Duvernay is nice, but they are not the number one wide receiver that Lamar needs. Josh Allen wasn't playing good before the 2020 season until the Bills got Stephon Diggs. When they got Diggs, Allen started playing like an elite quarterback. Acquiring Diggs stepped up Allen's game by miles, and Lamar has been able to be an elite QB without true weapons other than Mark Andrews. He is doing more with less. Imagine if the Ravens get Lamar number one. Uh, my last hope is signing OBJ for the playoffs, but I don't even know at this point. Shaking my head. And yeah, we can imagine. But, I mean, that's all that would be left to do is just imagine. Um, and, I mean, it is what it is at this point. Uh, Ravens got, they are clearly uh, moving forward with the guys that they have. Um, the guys that they got on the practice squad and whatnot. And 
We just got to hope for the best. The last questions on this episode came from my guy Nazarene. He said, hey fam, just wanted to share this article PFF dropped today. I knew I wasn't tripping. Uh, the link will be at the bottom if you want to check out the rankings, weaknesses, and strengths article. Enjoy. Uh, number five, Baltimore Ravens. Their preseason rank was nine. Uh, biggest strength, offensive line. Over the past month, the unit has been ex excellent in pass protection. With left tackle Ronnie Stanley working his way back into a full workload since week five, Prior to Monday Night Football in Week 9, um, Ronnie Stanley's pass blocking grade is second among tackles. Patrick McCary uh, is 14th. Right tackle Morgan Moses is 18th. Kevin Zeitler. <laughs> Kevin Zeitler is first among guards. Ben Powers is second. That's good. Rookie first-round center uh, Linderbaum is still coming along, but he has gotten better each week. He was bullying Tampa Bay Buccaneers linebacker Devin White in Week 8. Yeah, yeah, he, he was having fun with him. He, he was having a good time, man. Um, but he said, biggest weakness, wide receiver. Uh, this was the answer even when Rashad Bateman was in the lineup. And now that he's out for the year, Baltimore has an argument for the worst wide receiver group in the league. Uh, the unit has a 65.8 receiving grade, which ranks 25th with the second fewest receptions and explosive receptions on the year. Uh, X Factor for the second half. Rookie tight end Isaiah likely may need to become a focal point of the offense on a week to week basis, not just when Mark Andrews is injured with the loss of Rashad Bateman. Baltimore needs any and all pass catches to step up. Likely has six receptions for 77 yards and a touchdown in week eight against Tampa Bay. Um, and yeah, then uh, in the game last night, he had what, one reception, the touchdown? And then he had the two drops. Uh, so yeah, anyway. Um, he also said, what's good, fam? Jeff Zrebic agrees with me. Remember when I said we have the most talented roster in the league? A lot of experts agree. Here's what Jeff Zrebic said. Uh, there has been, so he's quoting Jeff Zrebic now. There has been so much talk about what the Ravens don't have, but here's what they do have. One of the league's deepest rosters. It's been on display during their three-game winning streak, and the Ravens are about to get even deeper. Is he agreeing? Does deep mean talented? Or does deep just mean depth? It all depends on how you look at it. It depends on how you look at it. Um, the Ravens, they have a lot of talent on their roster, more so on the, the, the defensive side. I think that's where they got, like, a lot of talent. It's like, whoa. Um, and on the offense, there's a couple of guys. Um, but, um, yeah, man, I guess uh, it, it all just depends on how you view it. So, I, I guess the, the talent is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Shout out to Graven.